Hi everyone and welcome to this video on sketching log graphs. Uh, in this video I'm going to look at the basic shape of the log graph and how we can sort of uh, use the different transformations of graphs to sort of get around them. Um, so to begin with sketch y equals log base 2 of x by first creating a table of values and plotting the points. Now to do this question what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to set up the table of values so that it uses values that are sensible for this kind of problem. We're taking log base 2 of a number. So I want values that I can get log base 2 of. So when I set up the table I'm going to have x and y and for the x values now I can't really choose a value of 0 because we can't do log base 2 of 0. Okay because you might remember log base 2 of 0 would mean 2 to the power of what equals 0 and this isn't something that has an answer. So zero is not going to work, okay? The function would be undefined there. So I might pick another really small number though. I might go one eighth and I'll go one quarter. I'll go half, I'll go one, I'll go two, I'll go four and eight. That should do. So log base two of one, well, we know that the answer to that is zero. That was one of the log laws. Log base 2 of 2 should be 1. Log base 2 of 4 should be 2. Log base 2 of 8 should be 3. Uh, log base 2 of half should be negative 1. Log base 2 of a quarter should be negative 2. And then negative 3 here. So when I go to draw this, the other thing I'll point out, I haven't really explicitly stated yet though, is that we also can't do the log of negative numbers because again, 2 to the power of something equals a negative number, we can't do that. 2 to the power of something is always going to be a positive number. Please Sorry about that interruption. Anyway, so now I'm going to plot this out. So I've got the y values there. Now, actually, I should have drawn this um, y-axis as an asymptote. draw the x-axis so when we had an x value of 1 8 the y value was negative 3 when we had an x value of a quarter the y value was negative 2 when we had an x value of half the y value was negative 1. When we had an x value of 1, the y value was 0. This isn't really to scale, but an x value of 2, hmm, that's interesting. x value of 2 gives a y value of 1. x value of 4 gives a y value of 2. So it's going to be like way up over there somewhere. So the shape of this graph is going to go something like that. And it has an intercept at 1, 0. And I should label this asymptote with its equation, which is x equals 0, because it's a vertical line. And I should label one other point on it, which I said that I had 2, 1 there. so. That'll be okay. Um, and that's all we really need to do. Now, as I said in the exponential videos, um, the log function is just the inverse of the exponential. So all the x's and y's are swapped. So what this means is that the domain has swapped with the range and vice versa. Um, the horizontal asymptote has become a vertical asymptote. And we can see that it's just the reflection of the exponential function in the line y equals x. So that's how we can get the general shape of it. There's a couple of other things to consider here. So y equals log base 2 of x has this sort of shape. And again, this is an asymptote along the y-axis. 
if I had y equals negative log base 2 of x, then that negative at the front there represents a reflection in the x-axis. So if I reflect that curve in the line, no, in the x-axis, then it's going to look something like that. Okay? Alternatively, there are two other variations of this. So if we have log base 2 of negative x, this negative here represents a reflection in the y-axis. So the graph would be reflected in that y-axis, which again is an asymptote. And so based on the original graph, it's going to look something like that. And the fourth variation is if we have negative log base 2 of negative x. So this has both the reflection in the x-axis and the reflection in the y-axis. And so drawing this graph out, it's going to look something... Oops, that wasn't ideal. So it would look something like this, where it's reflected in both axes. So those are the four different shapes that we can have, and it's just really important to consider those uh, different transformations on the shape of the graph. Anyway, I'll leave it up there and see you next time.